What is your name, please? My name is Dr. John T. Hagen. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. John P. Hagen. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. John P. Hagen. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Dr. John P. Hagen, and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome once again to our game of deliberate misrepresentation, wherein four presumably smart people try to figure out which one of three challengers is sworn to tell the truth. Tell the Truth is brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Jack Parr. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hi Gardner. <laughs> Now, these three people all claim to be Dr. John P. Hagen. Only one, of course, is the real John P. Hagen. The others have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, will you follow along? There is a copy of an affidavit in front of you, and I will read the original to you. I, Dr. John P. Hagen, am an astronomer and astrophysicist, currently with the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington. I am an alumnus of four universities, I once received a certificate of merit from the President of the United States for my work on a special project. At present, I am director of Project Vanguard, better known as the Earth Satellite Project. During the International Geophysical Year, my group will attempt to fire into space the first man-made satellite, which will circle the Earth for purposes of scientific study. Signed, Dr. John P. Hagen. Now, we'll get on with our game in just about 30 seconds. These three people all claim to be Dr. John P. Hagen, director of the Earth Satellite Project. Remember, only the real Dr. Hagen is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Dr. Hagen. And we'll start tonight with uh, High Gardner. High? Uh, number three, what were the names of the two brothers who were the, uh, uh, I guess I'd say they were the earliest explorers uh, of undersea and uh, the air by sub and by balloon. Uh, Picard. You know what their first names were, sir? Uh, one was John and one Paul. I'm not positive of the first uh -huh. names. Now, where, uh, number three, is the largest telescope uh, in the United States located? Palomar, California. Uh, number one, uh, what is the name of the scientist who helped to perfect the guided missiles for Germany and, and now is an advisor to the United States government? Werner von Braun. Uh, number two, England had a mission uh, which devoted itself entirely to studying flying saucers. Do you know the name of that mission? No, I don't recall it. Polly Bergen. I don't suppose any of you happen to know the lyrics to high, high the, How High the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, number three, could you tell me uh, for what you won the Certificate of Merit? Well, it was for development of uh, scatter radio techniques and the microwave range, which is now being used on the dew line. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, don't go on, because I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Number two, what did you... I hope you won yours for something a little less involved. I'm sure it was. <clears throat> it was for developing a, um, a device to increase the intensity of the field of a radio telescope. Oh, well. Uh, what did you win yours for, number one? For participating in the development of radar prior to the war. There now, that I know something away. about. Now. <laughs> Jack Barr. Uh, number two, you're, it says here that you, Mr. Hagen, are an astrophysicist. Yes, sir. Would you spell astrophysicist, please? <laughs> A-S-T-R-O-P-H-Y-S-I-C-I-S-T. Well, I took care of that. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> how about that? Uh, number one, you attended four universities. It doesn't list the universities. What universities, please? Boston University, Wesleyan, Yale, and Georgetown. 
Number three, where is Wesleyan? It's in uh, Connecticut, Middletown. I believe I didn't go there myself. Kitty <laughs> <Jenny> Carlisle. <laughs> Kitty? <laughs> uh, number three, do scientists believe that there is any form of life in the solar system or outside of the solar system that would lead you to believe in the fact of flying saucers? You say scientists, I would say no. No. As far number, as I'm concerned. Hmm? As far as I'm concerned. Yes. Number one, what is the quantum theory? Quantum theory simply stated is that energy occurs in small packets, one and two, but never one and a half. He's right. That's, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's right because it's time to vote now. <laughs> so without consultation panel, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Please remember that the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote or a total of $1,000 if they fool the entire panel. All right, panel, everybody mark their ballots. You ready, Polly? Okay, <laughs> for whom did you vote this first round? <coughs> oh, what? What is that? Uh, what is that? I voted for number one. Yes. And I originally voted for number two because I decided I was going to play the, the game different this week. Oh. See? I decided that every week, the one who seems to know the least about everything is the one who is it. <laughs> so I was going to vote for number two, not because you didn't know anything, sir, but because we didn't ask you very much, so I figured it was probably you. But I couldn't do it, so I voted for number one. <laughs> I'm scared to ask you to go through that again, so I'll ask Jack Parr, whom he voted for. Well, I voted for number one. And, uh... Now I'm a little confused <laughs> because she did. <laughs> Don't but follow me. Mainly, mainly I voted for number one because you knew about that quantum theory and also psychology that I used and eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Kitty, your vote was for? Number one. Why? He's the man I want to spend time with on cloud seven because <laughs> he could explain the quantum theory to me. <laughs> and hi, Gardner, your vote. Well, I voted for number three. Uh, number one had a number of right answers. Number three knew the Picard brothers, and when I first saw him and noticed he didn't wear glasses, it made me think that you don't need glasses to look through a telescope, and I sort of thought that that might be the man. Wow. I want to tell you there's some reasoning going on here tonight. I hope yours was as good with your vote at home, because right now we're going to find out which one of these distinguished gentlemen is Dr. John P. Hagen. So, will the real Dr. Hagen please... Stand up. <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? My name is Howard Cash. I am managing editor of the Encyclopedia Britannica Book of the Year. <laughs> And uh, number three, sir, how about you? My name is Herbert O. Johansson, and I'm an associate editor of Popular Science Monthly. <laughs> you didn't get to ask your question. What was it, Paul? Well, I, I, when they first came on, I was very interested. I'm a tremendous science fiction reader, and I wondered if I wanted to ask them, but I never got the chance. Well, ask them later, because our time is yeah, running I know. short. Yeah, I know. Ask them right <laughs> after the show. Gentlemen, there were exactly one incorrect vote for a total of $250 from Gerald Hall. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night, and the best of good luck to you. Now, may we have our next team of challenges, please? <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca. What is your name, please? My name is Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca. What is your name, please? My name is Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca. All right, panel, once again, there's a copy of an affidavit. I'll read it. Will you follow along? I, Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca, am a full-blooded American Indian. 
I am currently serving my fourth term as chief of the Seneca tribe of more than 3,000 members. I received my formal education at the Carlisle Indian School, and I am currently employed as a supervisor of steel construction. In my younger days, my favorite sport was lacrosse, but nowadays tribal matters occupy most of my time. Signed, Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca. Now it's time once again to play our game. These three gentlemen all claim to be Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca, chief of the Seneca tribe. Remember again that only the real chief is required to answer your questions truthfully, and we'll start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number two, um, can you tell me what are the modern day duties of an Indian chief? The modern day duties of an Indian chief is to provide the welfare for his home family. Number three, can you tell me how you got the name of Cornelius Vanderbilt? I imagine the man was prominent at the time that I was born. Ah. Uh, number one, can you tell me if the American Indian is dying out now or maintaining its own numbers? No, he's not dying out. He's increasing. M not in, uh, maybe in, not in bloodline. Is his, oh, number two, can you describe a lacrosse racket for me? A lacrosse racket is a long pole with a curvature and a net uh, pocket that has to hold the ball. Is it a... Hi, Garden. <laughs> uh, number two, who right now is the American uh, uh, Department of Indians Commissioner, I think they call him? Uh, right now, the Department of Condition, uh, Indian Commissioner's name is uh, uh, Eckers. Is what? Eckers. Uh, number one, do you know who it is? Indian Commissioner of... Yes. Uh, Commissioner uh, of Indian Department. Department of Interior? That's right. It's uh, not Icky. Not Icky. Uh, number... Polly <laughs> <laughs> Bird. Number one lying about number two lying, or is number two lying and number one is trying to lie? <laughs> uh, number one, uh, why aren't women uh, of your tribe allowed to vote? No, we uh, keep them out of politics. Well, is this an old tribal custom? Or? It's a custom uh, of yours. Of mine? <laughs> you used to keep uh, the uh, squaws from voting years ago, All right? right. <laughs> Uh, number, number three, uh, just well give you a chance to lie a little. Could, could you tell me, uh, what is the scoring system in lacrosse? It's a single point system. Uh, one score at a time. Through the Best way to do it, believe me, one score at a time. Jack? <laughs> uh, number one, you attended Carlisle University. Right. Uh, can you tell me, please, the most famous athlete, perhaps, in the United States who was a graduate of Carlisle? Jim Thorpe. That's right. Number two, do you realize that you're molding? <laughs> <laughs> number three, number three, can you tell me the meaning of chemo sabi? <laughs> can you tell me the meaning of chemo sabi? Number two. Kimo Sabe, called the Long Ranger, my friend. <laughs> number, number three, you, uh, you're I'm an I'm sorry, that's all the time we have to pursue Kimo Sabe. It's time to vote right now, so no Kimo Sabe, just mark your ballot and select, if you will, panel number one, number two, or number three. Okay, panel, ballot's all marked. Holly, you ready? Well, who did you vote this time? I voted for number two. I mean, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to change your vote? Yeah. Number three. Get? Number three. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's too late. The judges tell me it's too late. You voted for number two, and that's the way it's got to be. Why did you vote for number two when you wanted to vote well, for number I three? Well, because I thought game two, and I put two down, but I really want to vote for number three. Well, it hasn't anything to do with anything. Sentimentally, we'll allow it, but it's up on the record now. We can't change it. Jack? Uh, I voted for number two. There you are. <laughs> Would you please put down a thing for number three? Why, why did you vote for number two? Because he knew about Kimo Sabi. <laughs> <laughs> and Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number two. He seemed like a proud descendant of Hiawatha. <laughs> <laughs> and Hi Gardner? I voted for number two. I think I met number one once at Macy's during a Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 
of a tree looks like he posed for the for the radiator cap of a Pontiac. The only one that looks legit is the middle one. It's more like the nickel to me, but in any event, let's find out now. How well you've done at home, we're about to reveal which one of these gentlemen is the real Cornelius Vanderbilt Seneca. Will the real Chief Seneca please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very it's much. It's not fair, bud. <laughs> but I'll quit. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, fair, but ladies but and gentlemen, Polly has her wig warm. Let's go on to the next one. Now, number one, uh, uh, who are you really? I... Uh, just stay seated and tell us sure. I am <laughs> fallen trees of the Mohawk tribe, foreman for John J. Abramson Company. Thank you, sir. Well, Number two, how about you, sir? My name is Jules One Arrow of the Cherokee Tribe. I'm, em I'm employed as engineer of St. Joseph's College for Women. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what better job for an engine than an engineer? Yes, hi, quickly. But number one, did I ever meet you at Macy's? No, sir. No, you no. never did. Right. Try there we have a complete uh, <laughs> uh, failure by the panel, which means, of course, $1,000 that you gentlemen will get to divide and a sentimental vote for number three from Polly Bergen. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night and the best of good luck to you. Indian chiefs are leaving, may I say that Chief Seneca is trying to convince the authorities in Washington not to appropriate uh, part of his reservation for a reservoir. He claims that such appropriation would be in violation of an actual treaty signed with President George Washington uh, and his tribe. Uh, Chief, good luck with your fight, sir. All right, may we uh, have our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Gurnan. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Gurnan. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Gurnan. Once again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Helen Gurnans, am the 1957 queen of organized dieting. I was so proclaimed at the recent convention of the Take Off Pounds Sensibly International Association, which was held in Cincinnati, Ohio. My hobby is bicycle riding, and I ride approximately five miles each day. I was for a short time employed in a nut and bolt factory, but now work in a restaurant as a cook. During the last 14 months, I have lost 196 pounds. Signed, Helen Gurnett. Named to be the Helen Gurnett's Queen of Organized Dieting for 1957. Again, each of you question until you hear the signal, and we'll start this time with our very welcome guest, Jack Parr. Jack? Uh, thank you, but Miss Gurnett's, uh, it says here that you lost 196 pounds. Number one. Number yes. one. Well, what did you weigh? I weighed 386. You've been let out more times than I have. <laughs> Number two, what did you, what did you weigh? 370. Three se and number three? 385. Uh, it says here that uh, you ride a bicycle. Number two, what kind of bicycle do you ride? A roadmaster. A roadmaster? Big wheel. Big side saddle or you? Just a <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, what size dress do you wear? I'm a 20 now. What, what size were you before? 55. Number three, how was your temper when you were dieting? Well, it was pretty good. Number one, is your temper better when you're eating? Well, it depends on what I'm eating. <laughs> Also, on whether her mouth is full or not. Number two, what psychological factor decided you to take off all this weight? I just wanted to be thin, see what it's like. Number three, was there a specific psychological factor in your case? Uh, yes. It was the quantum theory. <laughs> Hi, Gardner. <laughs> Number one, did you ever hear of an organization called Fatties Anonymous? 
No, I can't say that I have. Uh... Number three, have you? No. You haven't. Uh, number three, uh, where did you work as a cook? Oak Forest. Is that quite Oak Forest, Illinois? Oak Forest, Illinois. Uh, did you lose 196 pounds eating what you cooked yourself? <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, number three, what is, the, what is the difference between a British uh, cycle and an American cycle? I don't know. Number two, do you know? I believe the uh, British has bigger wheels. And number one, do you know the difference between an American cycle and a British cycle? Well, the British cycle has smaller wheels and it uh, goes much faster. It's a faster type of bike. Uh-huh. Holly? Number one, what prompted you to start on your diet? Well, looking in the mirror, I guess. <laughs> uh, Number one, uh, what exactly did you do in uh, the nut and bolt factory? Well, I was a packer. You pack nuts and yes. bolts? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Um, let's see. That's it. On the R, uh, we have to call our time out here now. It's time to vote. So will you please mark your ballots again, panel? And in doing so, select number one, number two, or number three. Okay, we all marked. Holly, are you sure you've got your mind made up with the right number down? <laughs> All right, for what number did you vote this time? I vote for number one. Why, Polly? She just looked like the right one. All right, Jack, your vote this time? Uh, I voted for number one. <laughs> what was your reason, Jack? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> 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 Kitty, how about you? I voted for number one. I felt that she looked like a woman with enough character to lose 196 pounds. <laughs> and how about you, Hi? Your, your vote this time was Well, I've been wrong all night, but I voted for number three because I think that having lost 196 pounds, she still looks better than Jackie Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> ah, even before. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, there he we are. that much Especially for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Especially all you ladies interested in diets. Let's find out now how well you guessed in this round with our panel. Which one of these ladies is the real Helen Grenens? Let's find out. Will the real Helen Grenens please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, you redeemed yourself tonight on that one. Number one, would you tell us who you really are, please? My name is Mrs. Lucille Coolahan, and I write poetry for children. Number two, how about you? My name is Jean Covington. I'm receptionist for Lipset Steel Company. And incidentally, panel and audience, we have here a photograph taken of Miss Grenens before she lost the 196 oh. pounds. Oh. I think you'll admit that's quite a change. Am I, yes, hi. I take it back. It does look like Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jack, that's what most, did you? I think that's the most sensational thing. I think this woman should should. Well, Word she. Failure. I really? think our guests want it quickly. Our time is running out. I got to say goodbye, Jack. What did you want to say quickly? I just want to know what Kim Wasabi means. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's about it, and let's see. We had one, two, three incorrect votes for a total of $750 from Jared Hall, ladies. Good night, and the best of good luck to you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and that, I'm sorry to have to say, is it for another week, panel. It's only time to say good night. So good night, panel. Good night, night bud. I'm mad. <laughs> Jack, nice to have had you here. Remember what I told you about Jared Hall. If tired blood is your problem, Try America's number one tonic, and believe me, you'll feel stronger fast. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Transportation for to tell the truth, made by American Airlines. Yes, the call to New York, Lord American famous luxury flight, the DC 7 Mercury. <laughs> to tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.